Hey everyone, this is Ivan from Yellowfin. In this video, I'll present some of the key highlights from the 801 release. In October last year, we introduced our new automated discovery product called Yellowfin Signals. Yellowfin Signals automatically discovers and surfaces the most important changes in your data as they happen. We also unveil Yellowfin Stories, the best way to tell compelling stories with your data. In this release, we have added major governance, performance, and usability enhancements to Signals. Yellowfin Stories has been enhanced to include integrated creation workflows for Yellowfin content, as well as embedding third-party analytical content. As it is with every release, we've also worked on improving overall performance and enhanced chart visualizations. Let's have a look at my timeline. As seen here, Yelfin has delivered six signals that are significant. For a better user experience, signal narratives have been restyled to provide more clarity. Metric and dimension values now are bolded because these are important in the signal and we want to draw your attention to it. Color formatting has been applied to the signal type and metric. Note that when setting up assisted insights and signals, you can specify if higher results for a metric are good or bad for the business. This influences the color that's shown here so you can quickly recognize which signals to look at first. The view where the signal originates from is also mentioned on the signal now. So when you look at a specific one or are notified about it, you will know which view it comes from. A new notification that provides a quick summary of all other signals discovered, ones that were not quite as significant but still relevant. If you click on the signals count here, you can view them on the signal list page. By receiving these signal notifications, you now automatically watch them. This enables Yellowfin to notify you of activities on a signal, which include new comments, stories, or signal actions, which we'll explore later. Let's take a look at this signal with a prolonged drop. To provide more clarity, one of the existing signal types called step change has now been renamed to breakout. Breakouts are scenarios where two consecutive data points have fallen out of the forecast, hence a prolonged spike or drop in this case. In a signal chart itself, we also show and label these data points as breakouts. Let's proceed to the signal list page and check out the latest changes. Upon entering the signal list page, it automatically filters for your signals, the ones you own or the ones that you're watching. The UI here has also been restyled, again to show the view where the signal came from, applying the new narrative styling and color formatting, as well as showing how many comments they are in any signal. Users also get to check who's currently watching a signal and who the owner is. Owning a signal is part of a new list of signal actions that we will explore later as well. Note that any filtering applied on this page is remembered, so when I explore these signals and come back to this page, I return to my filtered state. Let's explore this signal on April 11th for assaults. In 801, the user interface for a signal has been enhanced to provide a better analytical user experience. Besides increasing the readability of the main narrative, we have also added a secondary one explaining the actual numerical change and how much it is deviating from the moving average. Signals on a time series also now appear as white dots on a time slider. This allows users to know when a signal occurred when viewing this metric across time. We have also updated the user interface for related and correlated tabs. As a reminder, in the same data set where this signal is generated from, the performance of other additional metrics are shown in the related tab. This allows users to analyze metrics together with the main signal metric, for example, comparing the average temperature against the salts for the same time period. For correlated, what happens here is that Yellowfin automatically compares signals from other data sources but for the same time period. Correlation analysis is run against these match signals and if the correlation factor exceeds a certain threshold, these signals are tagged as potentially correlated and shown here. The more correlated these signals are, the higher they appear on the list. In this release, we have also introduced signal actions to enable better governance and management of signals. There are four actions to a signal that you can perform. Firstly, own. Assign yourself as the owner of a signal. The owner's name and profile photo gets listed next to the signal. 
in this page and also on the signals list. Assign. You can assign another person to become the owner. Owners can be reassigned to other users as well. Dismiss. You can dismiss signals that are not of too much interest to you. Doing so will unwatch a signal and archive them and you will not be able to see them in a signals list. To undo this action, you can search for archive signals and watch the one you want to bring back into the list which will undismiss it. This applies on a per user basis. Close. If you close a signal, it will close it for all users. The owner can perform this action if they decide that the business has provided the appropriate response or action. So let's own this signal. Note that these actions are also available on the signal list page. As part of 801, we have also updated the scoring to go from a star system to a simple thumbs up and thumbs down system. As part of this change, we have also updated the signal scoring algorithm for better personalization. Scrolling down, tab styling has been improved and the explain tab has been renamed into analysis. In the analysis tab, it is now much easier to see the auto-generated charts and read the accompanying narratives. The colors in these charts here are also now influenced by the settings for assisted insights and signals. So if you set high values are good or bad for the business, the same colors will be applied in these charts as well. To explore these assisted insights further, we have now introduced the ability to take the entire dataset powering this analysis into a new report for further exploration and discovery. Now let's get into a story and have a look at the improvements for Yellowfin stories. In 801, we've not just enhanced the user experience of creating a story, but also the workflow of creating and modifying analytical content when you're in the midst of telling a story. For example, we've added the ability to reposition content within the story simply by drag and drop. We have also enhanced the UI plugin framework for embedding third-party analytical content. This framework will allow developers to code their own embedding content. For now, we've added integrations to third-party desktop BI tools like Tableau, Click, and Power BI. Simply click on this menu and then paste in the link. These third-party analytical content will be interactive when you preview or publish the story. We have also added the ability to edit a report within the story and return to the story after. So you simply click on this chart over here, go to the toolbar at the top and maximize it. This brings you back to the report where you can now perform the changes you need in the report builder. Simply clicking on the return to story button will return you back to the story. There might also be cases where you need to create content for your story. You can now do so with the new create report button. Simply click into this panel over here and click on the create report. This will simply push you into a normal creation workflow and allow you to create the content that you wish. Let's fast forward this process. At the end, you will now receive a pop-up saying that the report and chart has been added into your story. You click on this button here and it will return you back into the story again. It will initially show the data table first, but simply click on the chart icon at the top to switch to the chart. For charts, we have added an enhancement to trim dimensions from a chart that do not meet a specific threshold. Let's look at this example here. I have a chart that plots the instant count by crime type, and there's quite a lot of them. And I do want to trim some of the values to perhaps show only the top five. You can now do this in 801 by using trim display. Let's have a look at how this is done. Going to crime type and clicking on settings, I now have a trim display option. If you switch trim values on, there are a couple of options for you to set. Firstly, you can select the metric trim bar. In this case, I will choose the series, which is some incident count. You can also decide to trim either the top end or the bottom end. And in this case, I'm going to use top end and I'm going to trim it to five values. I can also select whether I want to have a relative option or the absolute option. The relative option means that negative values should not be considered as positive, whereas the absolute option has negative values considered as positive values. This allows you to display the highest values regardless of their sign. There's also an option to show all other trim values in a new dimension labeled as other. 
And there you have it, the top five crime types by instant count with trim display. And that's it for key highlights today. For all other improvements in 801, check out the release notes and join the conversation in the Yellowfin community. Don't forget to check out our wiki and blog for more resources on the Yellowfin suite. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next release.